the the situation that we faced in 2002 in particular with the run-up to the war in Iraq was that we knew Tony Blair and George Bush were telling us repeatedly lies and we were mobilizing very very significant numbers of people already in the autumn of 2002 against the war in Iraq and the government responded to this by issuing a dossier um, which was supposed to contain the uh, evidence to go to war and to and that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Now we uh, rejected uh, the idea that we should go to war. We sent one of our leading members at the time, who was an MP, Jeremy Corbyn, who's now the leader of the Labour Party, and he went down on his bike and picked up a copy. He got an early copy of the dossier. Uh, to find out what it said. And I remember him phoning me and saying, uh, this dossier, we've got nothing to worry about. It doesn't contain any real evidence of anything that we didn't know already or that's any serious evidence. And I remember very, very strongly looking at the dossier and thinking that this was a series of speculative claims, a series of claims, for example, that the uh, that Saddam's palaces were um, where he was supposed to have hidden the weapons of mass destruction were much bigger than Buckingham Palace and the Queen's other palaces. In fact, they even did diagrams along these, uh, along these lines. And I remember thinking then what ridiculous uh, arguments these were. But of course, what happened, uh, as in repeatedly in the run-up to war, that was the, the spin which was put on this dossier, particularly by Alistair Campbell, was that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction which could hit British interests in 45 minutes. And the headline of the London Evening Paper that day was 45 minutes threat from Saddam. And this was the kind of argument that they used. We knew it was live then. We've since been vindicated about this because Kilcott, who reported in July, has made it absolutely clear that there's no serious evidence for weapons of destruction. This was one one of the many, many lies, there are, there are repeated that, uh, that uh, so many people know, but it was very important for us to be able to nail that. And that weekend, we had a demonstration of 300,000 people, which was the first very big demonstration we had against the war in Iraq. Jeremy Corbyn went down to uh, Westminster on his bike because as an MP, he was allowed an early sight of the dossier. He got it a few hours before. Uh, before we did. Um, he's been a tremendous supporter of Stop the War and of course he's now leader of the Labour Party. I was very, very proud to be in Westminster in July when he apologised on behalf of the Labour Party for the Iraq War in front of families of uh, children who died in Iraq, in front of Iraqis, in front of former veterans and peace and anti-war campaigners. And it's a tremendous thing to have a leader of the opposition who is uh, who is anti-war and for peace of course it's one of the main things he gets attacked for, for in the in the media but it's something that he's very much stuck to and we hope that this will be we don't see Chilcot as the end and Jeremy sees it at the end we have to see this as something where we can find the full truth and hold those who, who took us to war accountable. And this is still a very, very big question. And it's one that is facing us in the United States and Britain and in every other country that was involved in going to war.